you go up, just shift a little bit more this way, and then come in just a little bit tighter. Yeah. Yeah, more like that. Yeah, there's okay. actually more room on this side. There's more room on this side? Yeah, more room to your right. Yeah. Can we see everybody? Yeah, thank you. That's much better. So, so Natasha, people got to be able to see the baby. Too, so. <laughs> 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 the baby right here, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Keith Ellison. I'm the Attorney General of the State of Minnesota. And since the investigation and prosecution of this case began last May, everyone involved has pursued one goal, justice. We pursued justice wherever it led. When I became the lead prosecutor for the case, I asked for time and patience to review the facts, gather evidence, and prosecute for the murder of George Floyd to the fullest extent the law allowed. I wanna thank the community for giving us that time and allowing us to do our work. That long, hard, painstaking work has culminated today. I would not call today's verdict justice, however, because justice implies true restoration. But it is accountability, which is the first step towards justice. And now the cause of justice is in your hands. And when I say your hands, I mean the hands of the people of the United States. George Floyd mattered. He was loved by his family and his friends. His death shocked the conscience of our community, our country, the whole world. He was loved by his family and friends. But that isn't why he mattered. He mattered because he was a human being. And there is no way we can turn away from that reality. The people who stopped and raised their voices on May 25th 2020 were a bouquet of humanity, a phrase I stole from my friend Jerry Blackwell. A bouquet of humanity, old, young, men and women, black and white, a man from the neighborhood just walking to get a drink, a child going to buy a snack with her cousin, an off-duty firefighter on her way to a community garden brave young women, teenagers, who press record on their cell phones. Why did they stop? They didn't know George Floyd. They didn't know he had a beautiful family. They didn't know he had been a great athlete. And they didn't know he was a proud father or that he had people in his life who loved him. They stopped and raised their voices and they even challenged authority because they saw his humanity. They stopped and they raised their voices because they knew that what they were seeing was wrong. They didn't need to be medical professionals or experts in the use of force. They knew it was wrong and they were right. These community members, this bouquet of humanity did it again in this trial. They performed simple yet profound acts of courage. They told the truth and they told the whole world the truth about what they saw. They were vindicated by the chief of police, by Minneapolis's longest serving police officer, and by many other police officers who stepped up and testified as to what they saw and to what they knew. What happened on that street was wrong. We owe it and we owe our gratitude to fulfilling their we owe them our gratitude for fulfilling their civic duty and for their courage in telling the truth. To countless people in Minnesota and across the United States who join them in peacefully demanding justice for George Floyd, we say, all of us, thank you. In the coming days, more may seek to express themselves again through petition and demonstration. I urge everyone to honor the legacy of George Floyd by doing so calmly, legally, and peacefully. I urge everyone to continue the journey to transformation and justice. It's in your hands now. I also want to address the Floyd family, if I may. Over the last year, the family of George Floyd had to relive again and again the worst day of their lives when they lost their brother, their father, their friend. I'm profoundly grateful to them 
for giving us the time we needed to prosecute this case. They have shown the world what grace and class and courage really look like. Although a verdict alone cannot end their pain, I hope it's another step on the long path toward healing for them. There's no replacing your beloved Perry or Floyd, as his friends called him, but he is the one who sparked a worldwide movement, and that's important. We owe our thanks to the men and women of the jury who gave many hours of their time and attention to carefully listening to the evidence, weighing the facts, rendering a verdict. They are regular people from all walks of life, a lot like that bouquet of, of humanity on that corner on May 25th and in that courtroom. They answer the call and they serve in a landmark trial. They now deserve to return to their lives. If they ask you to respect their privacy, we ask you to honor that request. I want to acknowledge the remarkable team that helped us prosecute the case. We put everything we had into this prosecution. We presented the best case that we could and the jury heard us and we're grateful for that. We had the sole burden of proof in the case and history shows that winning cases like these can be difficult. I'm proud of every hour, every minute and every ounce of effort we put in this case and let me tell you, we spent many hours working on this case, did we not? We, week after week, committee meeting after committee meeting, this team never let up and it never quit. We fought every day and we did it together. The Attorney General's office together with the Hennepin County Attorney's office. Thank you, sir. And we did it together. I'm deeply grateful to everyone who worked on the case. Most of these folks will tell you it's a bad idea to put together a team of all Michael Jordans. Mm -hmm. Nobody would want to pass the ball. This team, that was their true strength, is sharing the load, passing the ball, understanding that all of us together are smarter than any one of us alone. And that worked. Although the verdict has been rendered, this is not the end. In the coming weeks, the court will determine sentencing, and later this summer, we expect to present another case. We will not be talking about that. This verdict reminds us how hard it is to make enduring change. And I just want to finish by sharing some important historical legacy, if you allow me. In 1968, the Kerner Commission was formed to investigate the causes of uprisings across major American cities. And a man named Dr. Kenneth Clark, a famous African-American psychologist who, along with his equally accomplished psychologist wife, Mamie, contributed to compelling research in the Brown versus Board of Education case. And Dr. Clark testified at the Kerner Commission. And I want to quote you what he said. I read that report, the one in the 1919 riot in Chicago, and it was as if I were reading the report of investigating the committee of the Harlem riot in 1935, the report on investigating the Harlem riot in 1943, and the report of the McCone Commission on the Watts riot. I must say again in candor to you, the members of this commission, it's like a, a kind of an Alice in Wonderland with the same moving picture reshown over and over again, the same analysis, the same recommendation, and the same in action. Those are the words of Dr. Clark in 1968. Here we are in 1920, excuse me, 2020, 2021. Here we are in 2021, still addressing the same problem. Since Dr. Clark testified, we have seen Rodney King, Admiral Louima, Oscar Grant, Eric Garner, Michael Brown, Freddie Gray, Sandra Bland, Philando Castile, Laquan McDonald, Stefan Clark, Atiana Jefferson, Anton Black, Breonna Taylor, and now Dante Wright and Adam Toledo. This has to end. We need true justice. That's not one case. That is a social transformation that says that nobody's beneath the law and no one is above it. 
this verdict reminds us that we must make enduring systemic societal change. More than a month ago, months before George Floyd was murdered, the Minnesota Public Safety Commissioner John Harrington and I released the recommendations of our working group on reducing deadly force encounters with law enforcement. What all of us in that working group, including law enforcement, wanted is for everyone to go home safe. Anytime someone doesn't, everyone's lives are changed forever. We use this verdict as inflection point. What if we just prevented the problem instead of having to try these cases? We don't want any more community members dying at the hands of law enforcement and their families' lives ruined. We, want, we don't want any more law enforcement members having to face criminal charges and their families' lives ruined. We don't want any more communities torn apart. One way to prevent this is to get into a new relationship where we as a society re-examine the use of force and our old subtle assumptions. I'm so proud of Chief Arredondo and the Minneapolis police officers who by their testimony said enough is enough. And another way to prevent it is by acknowledging and lifting up everyone's humanity, helping communities heal and officers be well. Another way to prevent it is with accountability. Passing laws and instituting policies and training is important, but they must be more than words on paper and there must be accountability for violating them. With this verdict, we have brought some accountability. Finally, this verdict demands us to never give up the hope that we can make enduring change. Generations of people said slavery would never end. Generations said Jim Crow would never end. Generations said women would never be equal to men. Generations said if you were different in any way, you could never be a full and equal member of our society. Today, we have to end this travesty of recurring, enduring, enduring uh, deaths at the hands of law enforcement. Those beliefs uh, are things we have to focus our attention on. And as I now do close, I just want to say to you, the work of our generation is to put unaccountable law enforcement behind us. It's time to transfer the relationship, transform the relationship between community and the people who are sworn uh, to protect them from one that is mistrustful, suspicious, and in some cases terrifying into one that is empathetic, compassionate, and affirming. Would that, benef would, that will benefit everyone, including police officers who deserve to serve in a profession that is honored in departments where they don't have to worry about colleagues who don't follow the rules. Now the, that work is in your hands. The work of our generation is to put an end to the vestiges of Jim Crow and the centuries of trauma and finally put an end to racism. We can end it. It doesn't have to be with us into the future if we decide now to have true liberty and justice for all. The work of our generation is to say goodbye to old practices that don't serve us anymore and to put them all behind us. One conviction, even one like this one that creates, even one like this one can create a powerful new opening to shed old practices and reset relationships. So with that, I just want to say that I do hope that people step forward and understand that nobody can do everything, but everybody can do something. You can do something the way like everyday people like Donald Williams and Geneva, Genevieve Hansen and Christopher Martin and Charles McMillan and all those teenagers and young people stepped up and did something. You can do things like help pass the George Floyd Justice and Accountability Act. It's in your hands. Let's get the work done. And now I'd like to invite my friend and partner in justice, Michael Freeman, Kennedy County Attorney. Thank you, Mr. Attorney General. First, I want once again to extend my heartfelt sympathies to the families of George Floyd. I hope today's verdict provides some measure of closure for them. Now, let me say what a tremendous job Attorney General Keith Ellison did in recruiting and organizing a talented team of prosecutors and supporting staff. Great job. Matt Frank, Jerry Blackwell, Steve Fleischer, and Aaron Eldridge were exceptional. Their use of 
experts, evidence, and witnesses left the jury no alternative but to find Mr. Chauvin guilty. We and the people of Minnesota should rightly be proud of these four and your entire staff of volunteers and assistant attorney generals and the jobs they did over the last seven weeks. I'm also proud from the moment that the Hennepin County Attorney's Office charged Derek Chauvin with murder and manslaughter four days after George Floyd's murder, our team worked long hours side by side with the Attorney General's team. Managing Attorney Gene Burdorf did legal analysis and writing. Assistant Hennepin County Attorney Joshua Larson did witness prep and strategy development. And Vernona Boswell, manager of our Victim Services Division, has been in direct contact for nearly a year now with the family of George Floyd. Victim and witness advocates Jessica Immerman and Keith Johnson managed all the witnesses, civilian and professional. My two deputies, Lolita Iyoa and Andy Lefevre and I supplied strategic advice and coordination to this talented team 24-7. These guilty verdicts against Mr. Chauvin cannot be the end of the conversation about officer killings of civilians. We need to prevent these killings in the first place. The Minnesota legislature, as it moves into the final three weeks of the session, must pass a number of bills that will make policing fairer and safer for all, but especially for black men and women and other people of color. I've been lobbying legislators to pass these critical bills. If they fail, then it will be time once again to have a statewide task force to hold hearings and come up with model legislation intending to put an end to these deaths. I am prepared to be part of that fight. Again, Keith, great job. Thank you, Mike. And now I'd like to ask the trial lawyers to, to uh, share some thoughts if they have any. Uh, but before I do that, I'd like to myself thank uh, a number of people. And I'm just going to start by, and, uh, well, well, why don't you just, why don't we just, uh, why don't we just have uh, our trial lawyers come forward and then we'll thank our whole team. So uh, Jerry, Steve, which one of y'all want to do it? Matt, where's my Thank you, Attorney General Ellison. Uh, and when I say thank you to Attorney General Ellison, I want to thank you for calling me and calling me back into public service, which is something that I was able to do as a federal prosecutor, as a state prosecutor, uh, as an assistant county attorney in the United States Army. Uh, and when I left private practice, I thought those days were behind me, but I received a call and it was from, from Keith Ellison. And he gave me the opportunity to step back into public service, something that is so important to me, something that I cherish. And I would just encourage anyone, if you get a call like that as an attorney, it's such a, it's a, it's a privileged life. It's a noble profession. And if somebody calls you and they ask you for help, don't overthink it, uh, just do it. As, as I've found in my career, you, you get a lot more than you give. Uh, I'm honored to have stood with the Floyd family, to stood with the state of Minnesota as we, as we go through this painful process together. And it's been my privilege to practice with this incredible, incredible gifted trial team. And so uh, I stand here today in gratitude. Uh, I'm thankful. I wanna thank the jury for their service, for doing what was right and decent and correct and speaking the truth and finding the right verdict in this case. I'm Jerry Blackwell, and my comments are going to be uh, fairly brief. I wanna first say thank you to all of these selfless servants that you see standing here and the many more that you do not see, who had the willingness, uh, the courage, the passion, the intestinal fortitude to get into good trouble. Uh, they stepped into the light and the shine. And for that, I say thank you. I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful for the opportunity that I've had to serve. Now, no verdict can bring George Perry Floyd back to us. But this verdict does give a message to his family that he was somebody, that his life mattered, that all of our lives matter. And that's important. 
And I also hope that this verdict for all of the rest of the collective, all of us, will help us further along the road toward a better humanity. Thank you all. Uh, Matt Frank. Well, I can't really follow that too much, but I just want to say that it's been really a privilege to work with this awesome group of dedicated, hardworking uh, people in this endeavor. Um, but it's also been a, just a total privilege to get to know the Floyd family and spend time and get to know them. Uh, because first and foremost, this is for you, George, right? and for your family and friends. Thank you. Thank you. Ben. So let me also thank very publicly Aaron Eldridge, who was part of our trial team, who's not here today, but was indispensable. Lola Velasquez Agalu, thank you, Lola, for a wonderful job that you did. Josh Larson. Josh, thanks so much, my friend. Uh, Zuri Bal uh, Balmakum, thank you, Zuri. And Natasha Robinson, I want to thank you and your, the next generation, <laughs> the next generation of justice seekers. Dion Dodd, I want to thank you. Dion, where are you? Thank you very much. And I want to thank you, Vernona Boswell. You are a star. Uh, and I also want to thank so many other people. But for, with that, uh, we're going to close our comments right now and just say that uh, we're prepared to continue to pursue justice. Thank you. What kind of sentence are you going to see? Pardon me? Hey, the deputies are here to escort you. The exits are clear right now. So. Okay, you guys. The uh, 